Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Let's build a mouse lure. So I've been thinking about making a mouse on the lathe for a long time. And recently one of you guys, uh, sorry, I don't remember who it was, suggested that I do just that, make a mouse on the lathe. Now obviously making a mouse on the lathe isn't exactly carving a mouse, right? You're not gonna get all the details. So what we're shooting for is the right silhouette of the mouse when the fish is looking up at it. I'm pretty sure he's not looking for all the little tiny details. So let me show you what it's probably gonna look like coming off the lathe. So this is gonna be the general shape that I'm gonna attempt to get off the lathe. This part is sort of the rear haunches of the mouse. This is the torso, kind of the belly area, and then that's the head. Now to me, that has a pretty nice silhouette. And if you can imagine a fish looking up at that, I think he could be fooled into thinking that is a mouse. Now we wanna make it look a little nicer so it looks good in our tackle box. I wanna flatten the bottom out so it rides a little better on the water. And we'll do a little bit of carving on the head, maybe some ears and definitely some little beady eyes. And then we'll see what we use for a tail. The length of the body is gonna be two and three quarter inches or 6.98 centimeters. The fat part in the back will be one inch or 2.54 centimeters. The middle fat part will be 7 eighths of an inch or 2.22 centimeters. And then the widest part of the head will be 3 quarters of an inch or 1.9 centimeters. And we're going to make the little mouse out of this little cypress log. It's the top of a little cypress tree that fell in my yard eh, probably like five years ago. But it's been in the shop so it's in pretty good shape. Let's put it on the lathe. All right, I've got it nice and rounded, and now I just want to make sure that the piece I'm choosing here has got good clear wood. And we won't have a problem with any uh, wormholes or any rotted spots. Looks pretty good. Now I'll go ahead and put some blue tape and a little basic half drawing of the uh, body that I want to make right here on my tool stand. All right, we're pretty close to the absolute widest point of the, of the lure, one inch. Now I'm gonna start really shaping the thing. All right, that looks pretty good. It matches up pretty well. I still have a little too much bulk on this thing. So I'm gonna count on losing a bunch of that bulk when I sand it down. I'm gonna go ahead and sand it down. I'll get back to you when I'm ready to cut it off. All right, I'm gonna select an area where I'm gonna call the bottom. And I'm looking for the roughest wood because I'm gonna sand that back. So right around here, we'll call the bottom. And I'm going to take this to the belt sander and sand that flat. I can't see anything the full on dust from sanding. All right, so we need to talk a little more about how this lure is going to, well, the way I intend it to behave in the water. So it's definitely going to be a topwater lure and I'm going to put a bib on it so that it's a waking bait. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, about waking baits, a waking bait is a lure that stays on the surface or very near the surface and as it moves through the water it leaves a wake or a wave. This one is going to be on the surface so to keep it on the surface 
the angle of the bib has to be almost vertical. Actually, I'm gonna make it 10 degrees off vertical. So if that's a vertical line, then this angle here is 10 degrees. All right, I've got the lure in my vise, but I've got this flat part facing up. And I'm making sure that that center line is vertically up. But the lure is on a 10 degree angle. Let me show you. I'll just slide this little piece of wood on top and I'll put my angle finder right there on top of the piece of wood and try to balance it. And that should be measuring that angle. And I hope you can see it's right at 10 degrees, maybe 10 and a half degrees. So now I can just put my saw up against these nice plum edges of my jaw and just slowly cut a slot. And about 3 16ths of an inch should do it. And because the Lexan lip is thicker than that blade, I'm going to go ahead and just widen that slot with this double blade. This is two pieces of a hacksaw blade glued together. And the idea is you take your time, go slow. This way you won't get it out of whack. It's important that it doesn't get either angled or angled in the vertical direction and ruin the action of the lure. All right, that should do it. Let's take a look at it. All right, that's got us a pretty nice slot. All right, I'm gonna shorten and uh, sort of shape this snout a little bit, but first I wanna cut a little slot to kind of look like the mouth. All right, by drawing a little center line, I can align a couple of eyeballs but I still feel like it's kind of bulky. So I'm gonna take a little more off the bottom on that uh, belt sander out there. Now I'm just gonna make some eye sockets nice and slowly just by hand so I don't chip out the wood. And I wanna make it so the eyes sink in a little bit. They're gonna be beady black eyes, something like that. All right, I'll get back to you when I'm a little closer to carving the ears. All right, so that's what the ears are gonna look like once I got them carved in. I'm gonna take off a bunch of material off the side. Not a bunch, but I'm gonna take a little material off the sides and flatten it out a little bit and a little bit and a little bit off the top of the head and maybe take a little off the snout. It seems a little bit long, but starting to look pretty good. Like a nice chubby mouse and hopefully the bass will think it looks tasty. The last little detail is where I'm gonna put the hook hangers and the tie and eye. I am gonna have a belly hook eye. I considered having just one hook, but I think this lure can handle two hooks. So we'll have a hook hanger right there and right here at the break at this corner at the very back. And then we're gonna have the tie and eye really close to the bib. It's important when you make a weight bait that you put that tie and eye as close to the bib as possible. And in fact, with a bib like this and the lure, on top of the water, most of the movement is going to be kind of a rocking back and forth and not so much of a pivoting side to side. But that's kind of what you give up when you go top water. So we'll have that tie and eye right here under the chin. All right, let's drill the holes and then we'll twist these up out of wire. Okay, so as usual, I'm using this 174 pound stainless steel leader wire to make these twist eyes. First, I cut about a four inch piece and then I bend them over so they're like little U's. And then I use these safety wire twisting pliers to do the actual twisting. I put it on a peg and just twist. So I just gotta make two more. And there you go, these guys are ready to get glued in. And on a small lure like this, I'm just gonna use crazy glue. I'll make sure I got plenty on it, and then we'll slide it in there, give it a few twists, put a couple drops on top. I want to put a quick clear coat on there, so I'm going to wipe it down with some alcohol to get it ready. I just want this clear coat 
to be thin so it just seals the wood, raises the grain a little bit and leaves a nice even surface to paint on. And I'll put it in the UV chamber and leave it in there with the lights on for about 45 minutes. All right, it's the next day and this thing looks okay. It's just sort of a very light coat. I need to sand it down before we paint. But before we get too far along, I drilled a little hole right there on the back of this thing. And I'm gonna use that to mount a little coil spring. And that's gonna be so I can twist on the tail. But the little coils I have are too big. So we're gonna make one. Let's do that right now. I've got a little block of wood with a little nail sticking out of it. And next to the nail, there's a tiny hole I drilled. I'm using the same stainless steel leader wire I used for the twist eyes. And I, th I don't think we need any more than three inches. Bend a 90 in it, and that tab goes into the hole. And then I've got this little custom made wire sneller that I, I made on a video, and I'll put a link to that above me right here. And this clips in right here, grabbing the wire, and then you just twist it around. There you go. Pull it off. And then I'll just take some pliers and pull the stretch the coils out. Snip off the tails, and we have a perfect little corkscrew coil to mount our tail on. A couple of drops of crazy glue in there, the coil. Now I'll put a little bit of baking soda in there. That makes the crazy glue set immediately, and also gives it a nice solid foundation in there. So I put a two and a half gram split shot right back in the fattest part. This is the part with the most buoyancy. The idea is to counterweight it so it sits nice and level, hopefully. And I'm gonna go ahead and just fill this hole in a little bit with crazy glue and baking soda. All right, it's just a matter of sanding this down and we'll be ready to paint. All right, I've got it mounted here in my paint booth and that little coil tail makes it look more like a little pig than a mouse. All right, we're gonna start off with white paint as usual. This is gonna be a pretty simple paint job, a light belly, gray on top, and then maybe a little bit of brown just to break up the gray. Oh, and I did wipe it down with uh, denatured alcohol. All right, I don't have a pink paint, so I'm gonna go ahead and just mix a little bit of white with a tiny bit of red on this uh, mixing stick. And hopefully that won't be too much. I'm gonna go with a little bit more of a bright pink than like Pepto-Bismol, but that's a pretty good pink. I don't know if you can see it on my fingernail. Now I just gotta transfer it to the gun. Just need a couple of drops. All right, now he looks like a little white lab rat. Now I'm gonna try painting the rest of the body, except for the belly, I'm gonna leave mostly white. And I'm gonna use this Badger ghost tint paint. These are uh, really nice transparent paints. And this one's called Oil Discharge. It's kind of a gray. All right, I like that. It looks pretty nice. Not sure how it looks on the camera, but it looks very nice. It looks like a mouse toy. Now I'm gonna use another of my uh, ghost tint colors. This one's a brown and it's also really transparent. So it tends to blend the colors really nicely. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of that same transparent brown and I'm gonna to try to put some little dots to represent where the, um, the little whiskers might be. Not sure if I overdid it. We'll see what it looks like at the end. All right, this little piglet's ready for the mid coat and then after that dries, clear coat. And as usual, I'm using a Minwax polyacrylic cut 15% with um, distilled water.
So in the meantime, while that sets, we'll go ahead and get this tail mold ready. All right, now we just need to part the two halves of this mold box. There you go. It's pretty nice clean mold. Let's see how that does. Pull our master out. All right, that looks pretty good. Now it's just a matter of putting it back into the mold box, making sure the alignment pins go into little holes and putting a couple of rubber bands on. All right, let's see what we ended up with. Hopefully we got a good full pour on the first one. Still kind of hot, pretty good. A little bit of flash at the very top, but pull away this little bit of flash. Oh yeah, that looks really good. That's gonna make a good tail. It's ready for the chamber. And I'll let it turn in there for a while before I turn the lights on. This way the bubbles kind of come to the surface and pop. And that'll take about five minutes and then I'll turn the lights on. Well, disaster struck. I guess I wasn't paying really close attention when I put the lure in the uh, holder here. And as it was turning, it fell. I didn't notice it. So it ruined the finish. So now I'm taking it all off. I'm not gonna video the painting again. I'm gonna paint it exactly the same way. It may look a little different from the original paint, but it should be pretty close. Anyway, I'll spare you the rest of the carnage. Remind me again why we don't just go out and buy these things. I'll get back to you when it looks perfect and brand new again. All right, I did my best to recover from that disaster and it's okay. It's not perfect, it still has some flaws in it because quite frankly, I coated it and then I dropped it and then I had to clean it. And coat. Anyway, it's been one of those lure builds, but still think it looks pretty nice. I'm gonna go ahead and screw the tail on. I'm rushing a little bit because I don't want to lose light. I want to get out there and test this thing. So let's screw the tail on. All right, that looks pretty, pretty wicked. I think maybe we shorten it a little bit. Uh, maybe not. Let's just leave it like that for now. Let me put the hooks on it. I'm putting number four treble hooks on it and I dress this one a little bit with some gray little fringes just so it looks like little legs working to swim in the back. All right, there it is with its hooks. Let's get out there and give this thing a shot in the water. All right, we're down here finally. It's looking pretty good in the sunlight. Pretty happy with it. Let's go ahead and drop it in the water and see what it looks like. See what it looks like on a retrieve. This is exactly how I would fish it, just along the grass line, and it comes back nice and straight. This thing's gonna be lethal. Just gonna have to wait till the sun gets a little lower. All right, gotta do something to pass the time before top water actually gets to be a. Uh, productive. Nice. And we'll just keep that guy in there in case we catch some more of his friends. We got another one. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. This has got to be 11 inches. Oh man, I was just playing with it and I got struck and I didn't even get the chance to set the hook. Bummer. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow, I can't believe that. I wasn't even really going for it yet. It's still kind of sunny out. I'll be honest, I've never used a mouse lure. And that was like my second serious cast 
that I was actually trying to entice a bite. All right, well, the sun is truly going down now. If you guys have been enjoying this, do me a solid and subscribe. Help me grow the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Share this stuff with your friends and go through my uh, video library. There's tons of videos of all kinds of builds. Check them out. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call it quits. It's pretty dark. I'm expected for dinner. So we had that one hookup and I couldn't close the deal, unfortunately. But we did do pretty well with the crappie. So we got like eight of them. Did okay. Thank you.